Hi guys, welcome back. It's good to see you here. Tremolo. I'm excited about today's video. Tremolo is that beautiful technique that allows a guitar to sing a melody and it, it just sounds great. I think it favors the instrument a lot in comparison with other idiomatic techniques. There are a few things related to tremolo I would like to address today. The definition of harmonic and melodic legato, the musical layers or voice leading, and finally some phrasing tips for this tremolo piece to help you with the interpretation. Before we get started, I'd like to let you know that this lesson is divided in two parts. The video of today will be a guide to start learning the musical aspects of a tremolo piece. The second part will focus more on the technique itself with some tips to practice tremolo. So subscribe to the channel and activate the little bell to get a notification when that video is coming out. The musical approach, the context and the final result is what I ultimately seek for and sometimes technique and musical interpretation overlap when we practice. Although the technique employed is very important to get the best out of your guitar, it is a means to an end, making music. Therefore, some of the musical aspects in regards to interpretation might have a more technical approach, as you will see in a bit. This lesson will be based on the fourth lesson or study of the third book by Julio Sagreras. It is a beautiful tremolo study suitable for intermediate students that allows to discover this new technique, but at the same time to enjoy to learn it. So, without further ado, Let's start with the first topic. Well, first of all, for those who still don't know, legato means in musical context the execution of a sequence of notes without the interruption or articulation of said notes, thus perfectly bonded together. I like to apply this concept to my interpretations in two different perspectives, melodic and harmonic legato. Melodic legato can be expressed in different ways. For instance, legato executed by violin is a performance of such notes with one stroke of the bow. On the guitar, this is also possible by using slurs, for example. But in this case, when applied to the tremolo technique, we should try to avoid interrupting the melodic texture by keeping the notes ringing until its very last moment before changing to the next note. But how do we do this? First, we need to understand the mechanics behind this technique. Playing guitar most of the times requires a perfect coordination between both hands and that means we must teach our fingers to time perfectly their movements in order to keep music flowing. With tremolo it works a bit differently. Tremolo pieces are mostly composed with the bass line and the accompaniment matching the first note of every bar, whereas the notes of the melody are slightly delayed, normally in 60 notes as you can see in this chord. And that brings a small coordination issue. If you pay attention to what happens when I lift both fingers, you will hear that the melody does not sound like that. As you could see, both notes are not connected, because although the bass line is required to be changed, fingers responsible for the melody must always be 116 note delayed, either pressing or lifting to produce the feeling of melodic legato. Therefore, I always advise to learn to adjust the coordination required by tremolo pieces. Harmonic legato uses the same logic, but it also has its own mechanics. The idea here is to keep the chords that integrate the harmonic structure of a piece consistent and connected among each other. For this, we would have to look out for the ideal fingerings that wouldn't prompt the disruption of the harmony when we change from one position to another, for example. Again, all this is very technical, but we have the clear goal of producing the most musical and fluent tone possible. Let's start with consistency. The first time you play a chord, it will dictate how the listener will perceive the rest of the music. If you present a chord that sounds like this, the audience will be expecting more or less the same sound or texture throughout the whole piece, which means when you present something different, it will draw the listener's attention. The question is, do you want to do that in this case? Personally, because we are now talking about the harmony, I think it should be as discreet as possible up until when something special happens or requires attention. When you play another chord that sounds like this, everyone will notice that that chord is not like the others, or at least so it seems. So, we want to keep playing the harmony with the same quality and articulation for most of its time while the tremolo rings over, like this for example. There is a situation where the bass line does require some attention though. On bar 15 and 16 the bass line gains importance by leading to the second part of the tremolo piece, 
with a noticeable descending scale. For the rest, we should try to keep the same sort of sound or texture to all chords of the piece by avoiding a breakage or disruption. One example, Sagreras plays a dominant chord of the bar 7 and 8 with his fingerings and afterward jumps to C major with his fingerings, which causes this jump of the same finger between two distant strings. If we want to make the tremolo and the accompaniment more fluent, we better play instead of 1 2 4 one, two, three, keeping this finger ready to play that note. And that allows us to play the tremolo a little bit longer and sounding legato. First off, you might have figured out by now, but it's good to mention that this piece is divided in two layers, the accompaniment and the melody. Therefore, we must keep the volume balance between both. The melody is of course the most important part as it stands out with its beauty, so the accompaniment shouldn't take over the melodic layer. Try to play it with your thumb softly for the most of the time, and when the time comes, use the dynamics of the accompaniment to create tension and relaxation during the piece. I think a good and easy way to start learning to control the dynamics of the accompaniment is to play it without tremolo. This way you can hear everything that's happening with the second layer. Afterwards, you can add the melody, but still without tremolo to avoid getting distracted with the quality or regularity of it. So you could play, for example, one note of the melody with the A finger, the first finger you use on every group of notes when you play the tremolo. This is also a good opportunity to learn the melodic legato mentioned earlier by pressing and lifting your fingers on the exact moment each movement is necessary. It is important to learn this slowly and segmented. You could perhaps divide it into positions. For example, here. The place that requires uh, coordination between the left and the right hand to produce the best connection between the notes, the best legato. I believe we should let intuition lead the music, but always supported by style, context and harmony. Because all of them together are the bond between you, the artist and the composer the creator. This study is meant to develop the tremolo technique, but it doesn't have to be boring or uninteresting. I would like to discuss some basic ideas for your interpretation that you can apply whenever you practice, in case you find it interesting. I won't go very deep into the theoretical aspects of it to keep this video digestible. A full in-depth analysis and more interpretation tips can be found in this lesson's premium version, link in the description below as usual. With all that said, let's start by analyzing this piece. I'm going to start by focusing on flexing the musicality by looking at the harmonic tension and relaxation. To clarify the harmonic structure of this piece, it is important to refer its structural poles. In one side we have the relaxation provided by the tonic, the first degree of the scale, which is E minor, and in the other side we have the tension, which is given to us by the dominant chord, B7. This analysis, although very simply made, helps us to understand to where music goes in terms of phrasing. Another way of looking at the relaxation and tension produced in a less theoretical way is to play the chords in blocks and listen what kind of sensation they create and how do they relate with each other. For example, on the first two bars of this piece we have a E minor chord, which is not very tense, but afterwards on the second bar we have the C of the melody against the E minor chord, and that already creates some tension. So we could build up from B. C, all the way to the dominant chord, so here it's a little bit more powerful than here. So if you use this dynamics from soft, and here it would be a resolution to an E minor chord, that's what our here expects. But Sagredas changes this chord it changes one note of the chord to C and it becomes a C major chord. And this chord is not uh, relaxing, it's actually powerful when you play from the dominant chord. So if you have this... It's unexpected. We actually expected this. By choosing the dynamics for your interpretation according to tension and relaxation, you can hardly go wrong. Sagredos doesn't give us any indication for dynamics, but it could also be interesting to follow the contour of the melody to decide on a specific dynamic shape. For example, on bar number 10 we have this descending scale. 
and we go from a 10th chord to a relaxing chord so why not playing like this these are two very basic ways to start creating your own music but hey we have to start somewhere right hopefully you could get some insight and practice ideas for your trommel pieces more specifically for this study and don't forget i will make a second part of this video in which I explain how to practice a tremor technique in more detail. So, stay tuned. If you like this video, don't be afraid of showing it by clicking on the like button and subscribe for more. Thank you for being here, and I'll see you very soon.